Hello and welcome to a very special episode of Cake Fight Presents The Making of Kaleidoscope. I'm writer, director, producer Paige Feldman, and this is The Writing of Kaleidoscope, a special series where I take you behind the scenes day by day as I write the script for the film that's going to be my directorial debut feature, Kaleidoscope. Now, Kaleidoscope is an enemies to lovers romantic comedy about a lawyer who wishes she wasn't, a stand up comic with stage fright and what happens when the two of them are forced to band together and try to get out of the time loop that has them reliving the worst night of both of their lives. So I want to talk today about an unlikely influence who has wormed its way into the writing of this screenplay. And uh, that is Alfred Hitchcock. <laughs> now what could the master of suspense have to teach me about writing a romantic comedy? Well, I will tell you exactly what it is as soon as we roll those titles. I love Alfred Hitchcock apart from being so full of intrigue and obviously suspense, they've also been really politically relevant for their time, and they have some of the greatest roles for women in classical Hollywood. Hitchcock's blondes, whether Tippi Hedren or Grace Kelly, Ingrid Bergman, Ava Marie Saint or Janet Leigh, characters that they played all have such depth. They were allowed to be upset or scared but then strong and in charge of their own story. They have sexuality that they're able to explore and mistakes they're allowed to make. It's really inspiring. It was really inspiring for me as a young film buff and filmmaker to watch movies where women were in control and often more astute and on top of things than their male counterparts. Alfred Hitchcock has always been one of my favorite filmmakers and someone who I've wanted to emulate. As I've shifted from my, what I initially thought I was going to do, which was make thrillers, over into romantic comedies, which is absolutely my happy place, I have never lost a love for Hitchcock films. As I've studied them more and more, as I've become more in tune with my identity as a filmmaker of romantic comedies and talking about relationships, I've realized that Hitchcock's movies are very much all about relationships. Take away the intrigue. You can strip all that away and there is still something there that's not just about the suspense of is Cary Grant going to deliver the suitcase on time or is he going to fall off Mount Rushmore? All of Hitchcock's films are about relationships. You have a boy and his mother, and that's Psycho. Or if you want to go for a different family, a girl and her uncle in Shadow of a Doubt, which is one of my favorite Hitchcock movies and features a teenage girl as a protagonist. I mean, this thing is a YA novel, essentially, but it's a movie. I love it. Priest and Confessor in I Confess. Husband and Wife in Dial M for Murder, which was the first Hitchcock movie I saw with the inimitable Grace Kelly. And it introduced me to the concept of German expressionism at a very young age. You gotta watch that courtroom scene. There is a man and his neighbors in Rear Window, and also a man and his career, a woman and her boyfriend, also in Rear Window. Two strangers in Strangers on a Train, and also a stranger and the other passengers on a train, and a lady vanishes. Finally, a spy and her handler in Notorious. And Notorious is the film that has inspired me in Kaleidoscope today. Notorious, very briefly, is about Cary Grant, who is an American agent, a spy of some sort, who is sent to recruit Ingrid Bergman, the daughter of a Nazi who's now living in exile in Brazil, to try to, try to get her to become a spy for the U.S., and basically screw the Nazis who have all been hiding in Brazil. Cary Grant and Ingrid Bergman have a love affair. And then Cary Grant is instructed to make Ingrid Bergman the honey trap 
for a Nazi who has previously been in love with her. It's a very romantic film about kicking Nazi ass. So obviously I love it. And Ingrid Bergman and Cary Grant are just two of the greatest romantic actors in history. There's this one scene in particular, and if you've seen Notorious, I know you know what scene I'm talking about right now. Because it is two and a half minutes of kissing. Two and a half minutes of kissing. Except it's not two and a half minutes of kissing. Because here's another thing that Hitchcock was great at. He was great at evading the Hollywood production code. Now, the Hollywood production code, or the Hayes Code, is the sort of precursor to the MPAA and also is the reason that the U.S. is the only country in the world to not have a government censor censorship board for films. And I know this because I got my law degree, I got my JD, this was my thesis topic, was the Hollywood Production Code. Hitchcock loved giving a big middle finger to the Hayes office, which was the office that would say whether your film was acceptable or not. Back then, you couldn't have people just kiss for long periods of time. It was indecent. I mean, there's a lot of real antiquated puritanical stuff in this code. I can get into that in another video if you're interested. If you're interested in that, hit the like button, put a comment down below. I can, I can make a whole series about the frickin' Hayes Code. I'm obsessed with it. It is fascinating. And I also think it helped Hitchcock do some of his best work. Because instead of doing what I'm pretty sure he wanted to do in this scene, which was just have Cary Grant and Ingrid Bergman fall into bed together. He took it to a different place. He had them walk up into Ingrid Bergman's apartment and kiss and talk between the kisses. So there was always a breath, always a break. It was never a continuous kiss. So technically, the Hayes office couldn't really tell Hitchcock that he had to cut this down. I mean, this whole scene is two and a half minutes of them kissing and talking about, oh, will you have dinner with me? And, oh, I need to make a call to the hotel to see if I have any messages. It's just very sexy. It's a little too sexy for 1946. Also, when I talk about politically relevant, this movie was made in 1946, and it's about fighting Nazis who are currently exiled in Brazil a year after World War II was over. Good on you, Hitchcock. This scene is one that's always stuck in my mind. The ten the sexual tension here. It's not just about, you know, oh my gosh, is the bomb gonna blow up suspense? Hitchcock's always a, also a master of sexual suspense. So this the suspense here, the tension here is real and heightened and something that I wanna emulate in my own work. With my romantic comedies, I want them to be reflective of the world around us in diversity and inclusion, in terms of the identities of the people who have fallen in love, body type, sexual preference, very sex positive. A kiss isn't the height of the romance. The kiss is just the beginning of the relationship for most people. I want to show some sexiness. I want to I want to get in some like full Bridgerton style. Oh, that's hot. This scene from Notorious has inspired a scene that I wrote today in Kaleidoscope. So Lee and Joan are in one of their time loop iterations and in a previous one, they've had their first kiss. And then in one before this, they've discussed, okay, we're gonna keep doing some kissing. Maybe. Lee's not too sure. She has a boyfriend technically, but also no one remembers anything that happens in the time loop, so maybe it doesn't matter. So what we have here is Jonah just did a stand-up set and he's working through a stage fright in this time loop. And this is what happens afterward. Lee crushes Jonah with a kiss and suddenly pulls away, exasperated. Jonah, what? Lee, I shouldn't like doing this with you. Another kiss, especially in the middle of a crowd. Jonah, everyone is drunk or high, and Lee, and Devin will be back any minute, and I... Why can't I stop kissing you? Jonah laughs. Maybe you should keep doing it to figure out why. You know, for science? Lee kisses him again. For science. Another kiss. By the by, this is like the super steamy scene in Notorious where Cary Grant and Ingrid Bergman are necking at her apartment for two and a half minutes straight. I'm not going to write all the kiss pauses, but assume, for science, every few words Lee and Jonah are consumed with each other throughout the rest of this conversation. And that scene continues for another about two and a half pages. It's a lot of dialogue. It'll be a lot snappier than two and a half pages, but there is my ode to Notorious. And because I can, I called it out directly in the script. Today, I started writing at 142, page 142, 
and wrote un through page 152. I am still working through scenes 23 and 24. This script, this draft is going to be so freaking long, but that's all right. We'll have a lot of fun revising it and I'm having so much fun writing it right now. Thank you all so much for watching. If you appreciated this little film history foray, please hit the like button and let me know. I would love to do more of this stuff. My uh, undergrad degree is in critical studies for cinema from USC. So basically film history and criticism is what I'm certified to do. That in law, but I don't have the, um, I didn't pass the bar. I'm not your lawyer. I'm not anyone's lawyer. <laughs> Thank you all again so much for watching, and I will see you tomorrow for more of the writing of Kaleidoscope.